Hey guys, so we just released an update for Shot Tracer Pro, PC and Mac OS that has a lot of really, really awesome features. We call that update Shot Tracer Pro 2.0. And in this video, I want to tell you more about the awesome new features that we have in Shot Tracer Pro 2.0. One thing that I want to make sure to communicate is that there will be now two versions for Mac OS users. There will be an app store version and there will be a homepage version. Now the homepage version will actually have more features. And the reason for that is because the app store version has to be built in something called a sandbox. And in this programming environment, we can't add as many features as we like into the app. For example, the homepage version will have the ability to save work, and create projects. That being main, the main version, uh, the main difference between the two versions. So the main difference will be that the homepage version, the one that you purchase through our homepage and then download via a link, will have the ability to save work and save projects within the app. For the PC user, nothing will change because there's only one version that is available through our homepage. All right, without further ado, let me get into then all the new awesome features within Shot Tracer Pro 2.0. So the first thing I can do in this version, this is the homepage version, I can create a project. And I'm gonna call this project Pine Scores because that's the golf course I recently played and I wanna create a vlog on the first hole that I played on the Pine Scores. So I'm just gonna look up for my Pines folder and note, Yes, it's better to have your, your videos already set in folders before you import them. Uh, just makes things um, cleaner. And the, the, the app has registered three shots, but two shots haven't been registered because they're putts. And the way we register shots is through impact sound. And you can see those that haven't re been registered with those X's. And the ones that have been registered in that new pop-up, that without, they're without the X. And to, in order to set the impact frame on videos that haven't registered any sound, um, you simply just use the drag, um, the time scroller here and drag it to the moment you make impact with the putt. And here we have another putt. So here I just hit the putt right here. Yeah, I'll set that impact frame and we're good to go. So I've just added those two putts to my project and I don't necessarily need to analyze them because they're putts. We're not tracking putts at the moment, we're just tracking full, full shots. So I'm going to press that square button and stop tracking because I can skip tracking. I don't need to track those shots. And as you can see, I have three wonderful tracked shot tracers and then a putt, um, and, and a putt tracer I want to create um, by simply selecting the gears icon, then putt trace, and now I just reconfirm my impact frame. That's the moment I hit the ball where I make contact with the ball. And once I've done that, I press, uh, I can either use the, the keyboard to manu manually adjust the frames or the um, buttons on the screen. And I press set impact frame. And what I'm doing now is I'm just uh, pressing my space bar. And by pressing the space bar, I'm skipping multiple frames and, um, and I'm just tagging, basically, I'm key framing each, the position in each frame in order to create that line. And I don't have to go frame by frame. As you can see here, I'm skipping multiple frames at the time by using the, the space bar on, um, on my keyboard. And here it is, there's the line. And now I can just press play and preview what, um, what I've just created in terms of the putt tracer. Great putt didn't go in, but now I notice that I, I missed a couple of frames towards the end. So I go back into the gears icon and then press the uh, space bar again and add some more frames and add one more keyframe at the end. And now I've created um, a solid start to finish putt race. I could do the same here on the second putt, but for the time convenience, I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna skip it. I'm gonna go straight into Shot Tracer. With Shot Tracer, I now have the ability to change the features of the line and then apply my changes to different uh, videos within the same project, which is pretty awesome. So to do that, let's uh, change the line up a little bit. We're gonna 
increase the starting size, uh, increase a little bit, decrease the, la the landing part of the line. And we're gonna add a black outline for the tracer line. That looks good, I like that a lot. And I want to now apply that change to the other lines as well without having to manually do that um, with the other lines. So what I do is I just turn on caster shadow here as well because it looks cool. Now I go to the gears icon. Uh, and I want to apply the changes to those other two shots. So go apply line settings to other videos. And now I just select which videos I want to apply the changes to and press OK. And without any additional work, I have applied all the changes of the line and the line settings to the other shot tracer videos within that project, which is awesome. Now I can play that video back, check out the other video. That looks really great. Love it. Looks good. This one looks great too. And I'm done with a, an entire hole in terms of vlogging. I've done an entire hole within seconds. Now I can ex export the videos. I can export the current shot. I can export all shots or I can select which of those shots, which of, the, of those videos uh, I want to export. So it's not like it hadn't been before where you would just export all the videos at once. Now you can actually select. Now let's create another project. And this new project we're going to call Bad Tracers because I want to tell you a little bit about what happens if, for example, you have um, a bad quality tracking and also that we have added a new um, way of adding a tracer um, that isn't necessarily uh, using keyframes but line molding. So let's see what videos we can come up with. So we have this video of a part three and that video of a drive and we'll just let those videos now run the analysis part. Now, if you're working with projects, you wanna make sure that you don't change between projects if one project is running an analysis. Um, and what will happen is it will just cancel the analysis and then when you return to that project, um, it will just restart the analysis. But once the analysis is done, you can uh, switch between projects. You can even delete videos within a project and once you re-import them, they will reappear with the tracer line. Now, as you can see, uh, the drive video looks terrible and the um, part three video looks good, but as you can tell in the playback, it actually ended up tracking a piece of mud instead of, um, instead of the line. So let's see what we can do with those videos because um, to a certain extent, tracking has worked um, in this video, for instance, with the drive, but um, it didn't track all the way. So what we'll do right now is we uh, can either choose line molding or keyframing. We'll choose the keyframing um, option because it has tracked multiple points and all we need to do is press the previous frame button in order to delete a couple of the wrong traces because it started tracking those trees because they're moving um, and just now manually add a couple of keyframes that are in the that are the correct car, um, flight path. We add a landing point and voila, we have the perfect tracer line created. Now, we could have also used line molding, but in this um, instance, because it was uh, because it was a, a fairly good tracking, uh, we didn't have to. But let's uh, take the line molding example here as well. So what you'll do is you set the starting point, you set the landing point, and then you use the, um, the balls to move them around and um, set the height of the line, you set the, 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 the shape of the line as well, and you can zoom in and zoom out using the trackpad or the scroller on your mouse. Then you can also uh, lower the transparency of the tracer line, and this will allow you to better see the golf ball um, and also allow you to better adjust the acceleration of the ball. And the acceleration, it doesn't need to be exact, but it gives you three dots on the line. And what you wanna do is try to match those dots with the frames um, where the ball appears. Just try to match them somewhat. Uh, and then you can also change the flight time if you like. And yeah, that's it. Now you can create the line. And as you can see, the line is a little bit higher. It's not as um, I, would, I would say it's not as accurate as with the keyframing option, 
but it gets the job done, especially in those videos where you don't see the ball at all. And those videos are usually those kind of videos where um, the ball is overexposed. And now what we want to do is because the ball flew over the trees, not like the line didn't go before the trees, we're going to add um, line masking to the video. And what line masking does is it um, eliminates that part of the line in the exported rendered video. And this won't be visible in the preview because it takes a little bit more uh, processing time. Now let's move on to the part three shot where we have clearly um, hit a divot and tracked the divot. And we're gonna use again keyframing in that option. But because it was totally wrong, we didn't actually track the ball, we have to start from scratch. So we're gonna go and reset to set impact frame. And now we are going to set the impact frame. It doesn't need to be the moment you hit the ball. It, could, it can also be a frame before you hit it. And we're just gonna make sure that we at least keyframe the first couple of frames, let's say the first four frames. And then we can use the, skip, uh, the space bar to skip multiple frames um, continuously. So we'll skip about um, six or eight frames before we add another keyframe to the editor here. And in this video, we can see the ball flight very clearly all the way to the peak and even beyond peak towards the sand. And all we have to do now is just um, uh, set the landing spot, hit create line, adjust the landing spot if we want to in the editor, and we are good to go. Now we can change uh, again the color and the settings of the line. And also with the, some of the new features that we added before, add a circle or add a dot. So with the circle, we're uh, adding a circle around the ball. And in the preview, you'll see now how there's an awesome circle that becomes smaller the further the ball gets away. Or we can add a dot that just magnifies the location of the golf ball in the video uh, by putting a dot around um, uh, the ball in flight. But we'll stay with um, my favorite, uh, which is the pointy 2D line. And we uh, can now change different factors here. We can change uh, at what point the line hides after it lands, the flight time if we wanted to, to edit it. Um, we can straighten the line if we want to. Some lines might come up crooked, so you can straighten it. And we can add um, overlays, for example, distance and apex. If you're hitting drives, these are usually automatically calculated. Uh, if you're hitting irons, you might want to just edit those numbers to your preference. And let's preview that video. Looks great. Apex, total distance, looks fantastic. And we could just export the video if we wanted to at this stage. Good. Now let's go and have, take a look at our other project because I would like to do a swing tracer because we haven't discussed the swing tracer yet. So with the swing tracer, we wanna do a video where the club head is always in frame. So if, for example, this video, not so good, but that video, yeah, that club head will always stay in frame. So we use the um, settings wheel icon, the gears icon, and then select swing tracer. Once we've done that, we want to confirm the starting moment when you start taking away the club head and now press um, confirm and then we're just keyframing each frame where the club head is. It doesn't need to be each frame. You can skip frames by multiple um, space bars, but especially when the club head starts moving um, a bit in a non-linear direction, you wanna make sure that you um, mark every frame and more importantly, you want to make sure that you mark every frame when the club head is on its um, downswing path because it's very fast here. So you won't have a lot of frames to work with. Essentially, make sure to use at least 60 frames per second if you want to create an awesome swing tracer, like in this instance. That looks great. We can now change colors if we wanted to, uh, change a couple of effects and play the video within the app to preview the result right away. That looks fantastic. Great. Now, in summary, you can now, if you want to change the export settings of um, your video and also 
uh, decide if you want to auto trim the video to just the particular shot scenarios. That means um, backswing, impact, and then six seconds or seven seconds of low flight, or if you want to export the entire video from start to finish. As we've discussed before, we have the ability to now select which videos we want to export. And yeah, that's it. That's Shot Tracer Pro 2.0. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We are happy to help in person if you have any questions that come up.